All right, tell me what's going on. Nothing to talk about. Why isn't there anything to talk about? After deployment, something always happens. It's not your business to know. Yes, it is. No, I this is been, mine. I have been in the same predicament. There you are. What are you doing here again? What does it look like I'm doing? Drinking, as usual. Can you talk to me? Hello? Come on, let's get don't out of here. Don't touch me. Hey. Let's go. I said don't touch hey, me. Calm down. Fine. Forget it. Bye. You see what I've got to put up with? I know. Do you want to come back to that? I came back to that twice already. Especially after no. I came back from my first deployment. Not like this. Yes, just like this. Same stuff happened to me, and I got help. Where are you going? Let me drive you home. Life in the military can sometimes be a little overwhelming. Here at Fort Bliss, we're committed to ensuring that we support our soldiers. This short video is intended to present Major General Bromberg's behavioral health philosophy and demonstrate our commitment to the behavioral health needs of our soldiers. I'd like to spend some time talking with you today about uh, the changes we've seen as, uh, as the Army's gone through the last uh, nine years of uh, conflict in the wars in Af Iraq and Afghanistan and the stress on the force across uh, across the Army. You know, these last several years haven't been easy on any of us. Uh, and we're starting to see many, many indicators, uh, not just in terms of suicide, divorce rates, but just on the general stress that's uh, placed upon uh, all the members of our formations today, families, children, and soldiers alike. And what I'd like to talk about today is encouraging people to not be afraid to step forward when they're having challenges and issues uh, of, of a nature where they need help. And these could be anything from just simply needing to talk to somebody to serious uh, discussions about their mental or physical well-being. You know, it's not a sign of weakness uh, to, to, to hold things in. It's not a sign, of, a sign that you're a strong person, that it's a macho thing if you're a guy or it's something that you just don't want to let anybody know about. This is how we make ourselves stronger. This is how we make ourselves more resilient in the future by talking about these problems and seeking out help. Sergeant Horn, I don't know what's going on with you, but you better put it together. If you can't maintain the Army standard, you will maintain as a civilian. Sergeant, I would like to use the commander's open door policy. I am your open door policy. If you can't talk to me, you can't talk to anyone. But, sir, I really think I need to speak to the commander. Okay, then. But when we go in there, you better not make me look bad. What's, what's going on with these deadline vehicles? I, I, I'm just sorry. I don't know. I have to Excuse talk. me, sir. Sergeant Horn would like to speak with you. I'm not sure why. Isn't that NCO business? Why does he want to talk to me? Sir, that's what I told him. All right, send him in. I don't have a lot of time. Sergeant Horn, report. Sir, Sergeant Horn, important answer. What's your issue, Sergeant Horn? We got a lot to get done before we deploy. Well, sir, see, me and my wife have been arguing a lot lately. Oh, and... he just trying to get out of deployment. No, not really, Sergeant, but I mean, with all the arguing, I haven't really gotten much sleep, and it's causing me a lot of issues. I think I need to talk to somebody about this. Suck it up, soldier! That's what I told him. I agree with Sergeant Burke and First Sergeant on this one. Drive on with this deployment. You can deal with your problems. They'll still be there when you get back. If you can't handle your problems before this deployment, you're not fit to be an NCO. Do I need to do fit-for-duty paperwork on you? No, First Sergeant. I can handle the issues on my own. Thank you for your time, sir. I think it's important that everybody understand that uh, one of the things I still fight when I go out to units is I still fight the perception from young soldiers still tell me there's still a culture uh, amongst mid-grades, and I, don't, I would say NCOs and maybe some officers, about being a sign of weakness for seeking help 
uh, for uh, behavioral mental health issues. So that's one of the things that we have to change as an organization. But our goal is simple, and it's the goal of the Army, is to provide all our men and women with the best available support to help overcome these stresses associated with being a, f a force that's been at war for almost nine years now and the stresses accompanied with that. All right, right side tires. Yeah, yeah pressure's good. All right, rear exterior. Rear exterior. Um, nothing except the dent, but it's already been answered, so we're fine. All right, rear exterior. Seatbelt's good. I gotta go, I'll see you later. Where are you going? None of your business. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I need to take off to that appointment I told you about last week. An appointment? Oh, yeah, an appointment to the quack doctor. Yeah, go ahead and go. Just make sure you're back in time to help them finish up. Right, just she's just trying to get out of work. I know, I'm not surprised. Well, I wish I was crazy so I could get out of work. <sighs> The Army is going to great strides right now to make sure that everybody knows there's no shame, there's no harm, there's no foul in coming forward if you have issues. We are here to make you stronger. We're here to make your family stronger. The chain of command is behind you when you have these issues. Uh, that's why you see places across all our installations where we have different places from resiliency centers to increase in behavioral health specialists to military family life counseling. It could even be something as simple as you need help balancing your checkbook to get your finances straight after a long deployment and many separations. All right, right side tires. Yeah, yeah, pressure's good. All right, rear exterior. Rear exterior. Um, nothing except the dent, but it's already been answered, so we're fine. Alright, I'm going to good. I gotta go, I'll see you later. Where are you going? None of your business. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I need to take off to that appointment I told you about last week. Appointment? Oh yeah, I remember which one you're talking about. Go ahead and make sure that you get everything done that you need to. You're the first soldier that I've had that's been able to admit when she had problems and then go and get help for them, all right? So go and uh, do what you need to. Right, just hang on. I got it. Nice to get out of work. I know, I'm not surprised. I'm alive, I thought you were a real soldier. Yeah. Hey, Eddie! She is a real soldier. I just wish y'all were as brave as she is, being able to admit when you have problems and then go get help. Get this stuff done. This has to be done in an hour. Plus oh, sorry. Community Behavioral Health Service at Fort Bliss is certainly the best prepared to help you with combat-related emotional problems. Everyone here completely understands what you're going through. We've treated hundreds and thousands of soldiers with similar problems to yours. That every soldier has an obligation to perform at their best. If you're burdened with emotional problems, trouble sleeping, problems with your relationship, you're not going to be able to perform at your best. Excuse me, Miss Summerhorn. Can I speak with you? Yes, sir. Relax. Lately, I noticed your performance going downhill. Is there something going on you would like to talk to me about? No, sir. I'm just going through some issues that I can handle on my own. You are not alone. There are programs designed to support us. How about we use the open door policy? I don't think they have time to deal with all of my issues, sir. Trust me. Our leaders are very concerned about all of our well-being. Really? Yes. How about we go see them? All right, sir. But I will find out that information for you. All right. Yeah, we need to know that ASAP because uh, XO has been beating me up on that all day. So I uh, know later in COB. Uh, right, sir. Excuse me, sir. What's going on, sir? I'm going to excuse me first, sir. So I'm horrible like to use the open door policy. I noticed his performance going downhill even before we got word about deployment. So I suggest he come speak with you, sir. All right, sorry, Burke. We're real busy right now, but I always have time to talk with a soldier who has issues. So, awesome. come on in.
Sergeant Horn, report. Sir, Sergeant Horn, reporting in, sir. Hey, doing Sergeant Horn. Go ahead and have a seat. Relax. Do you, do you mind if uh, if Sergeant Burke and uh, First Sergeant stay in and uh, and listen to our conversation? No, that's not an issue, sir. All right, Sergeant Horn, you're a asset to our team. I understand you wanted to talk to me about something. Well, sir, me and my wife have been arguing a lot lately, and I've been not getting a whole lot of sleep. That's really affecting my preparation for this deployment. I'm not sure what I can do about this. Sergeant Horn, would you like some additional time to get help with your issues? I'm sure we can arrange this for you. I'd appreciate that, First Sergeant. I think I can get a lot done, and I can get my issues resolved for the deployment, so I can make this deployment go a lot better. I agree uh, with what First Sergeant said. Uh, Sergeant Horn, like, like what you say, once you get down range, it's, it's not any easier. The problems don't go away. All right? You anything else for Sergeant? I've been on three tours myself, and I know it can be stressful for you and the family. But I just want to assure you that we're here to assist you in any way that we can. And Sergeant Burke will assist you with your appointments, okay? Yes, First Sergeant, most definitely. All right, sounds good. Why don't we meet up back here next week uh, to review your progress? I appreciate this time, sir. First Sergeant. Okay. Have a good day, sir. You too. All our soldiers are important, and we should make sure we give all soldiers the help that they need. Absolutely. I think it's important that you young leaders understand your role is in, in getting soldiers help that they may need. Their, both their physical fitness is important as well as their mental fitness. And you young leaders play an important role in that. I mean, the op tempo that we've been on in the last eight years, especially your generation, your generation only knows war. Let's face it, every one of you sitting here have, has a combat patch on. You have seen things in your short career that I, I didn't see until I had eight, nine years in the Army and I, I was a, a Staff Sergeant Sergeant First Class. So you, you have to understand that there's a cultural change that we, we have to do in our Army toward behavioral health. It's okay to, uh, to seek help and ask for help. See, that's exactly the point. You have to talk to your soldiers. You have to know your soldiers and you have to talk to them about what's going on in their life. And you have to be reassuring. If you're sincere, and, you're, and you're, you're trustworthy, they're going to believe that. And they'll follow you anywhere. They'll follow you to the behavioral health place, or they'll follow you in combat. But it's how you, you establish yourself as a, as a young leader uh, to get soldiers to, to come forward and, and ask your advice. And here at Fort Bliss, Texas, we meet every 90 days uh, to talk about how to improve the behavioral health and the support for our families and our first soldiers alike. We've added new facilities, we've added several new buildings, we've hired many, many new counselors and psychiatrists, as well as we've increased the size of our chaplain force and training of our chaplain force. We've also increased training when you look at units and programs such as strong bonds and marital retreats and, and retreats focused on single soldiers as well, because no matter who you are, whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you're a sole parent, you could have these challenges. And I also want to mention that rank has nothing to do with this. You can have senior officers, command sergeant majors that have challenges and issues as well. But the most important thing is you feel comfortable to come forward and ask for help. There are many, many ways to ask for help. You can do it privately so that nobody, so that nobody knows that you're asking for help. But you should also let your chain of command know these are the issues that you're having. Because if, if there is a change in your job performance, if your chain of command understands that, they'll be very much more supportive in trying to help you work through those issues. So again, I just want to make sure everybody's very comfortable, and I want you to hear it from me as the CG of Fort Bliss, Texas, that we are behind you 110%, no matter who you are, individual soldier, family member, leader, brand new soldier of the Army, with multiple deployments or no deployments, whatever your situation is, we're here to help you. And there's no shame in coming forward. I know I've said that several times, but I really want you to believe that, not just because I'm saying and talking to you now, but the chain of command understands, and we're here to make you better. Because we know in our hearts that these deployments and these combat rotations and all the things we've asked you to do are very stressful on you and your family, and there's a cumulative effect of multiple deployments over time. And if we don't help you now and we don't make you stronger, that you won't be able to continue to serve with us. And that's what's important. We want you to stay with us. We want you to be in the Army, and we want you to do the right thing. And doing the right thing is coming forward when you have challenges so we can help you. Again. I want to encourage each and every one of you to seek out the help that you may need 
At the same time, feel comfortable know that your chain of command does support you. There's no shame. It's not a sign of courage not to come forward. It's a sign of courage to come forward. Thank you very much. Look forward to supporting you in all your...